started fretting about the coronavirus outbreak, the big worry in this market was Iran. Remember that? When everyone was acting like we were on the eve of World War III, I told you that would be a mistake. I thought there was a good chance President Trump would de-escalate the situation. More importantly, even if the situation had gotten out of hand, I was adamant that Iran could no longer really hurt us by disrupting oil supplies in the region. We just have too much domestic production these days. We're no longer hostage to the Middle East like we were. But if anything, I understated the case. This morning, Rusty Brazil of RBN Energy, perhaps the best energy analyst on Earth, and my go-to guy on issues like oil supply, put out a note to subscribers where he pointed out that historically an Iranian face-off like this might have sent Brent crude to 100 bucks a barrel. Instead, Brent peaked at 68 and changed. It's gotten hammered ever since because of the shale revolution. It's fundamentally changed the dynamics of this market, and Rusty saw it all happening. So let's take a closer look at the oil and gas space with Rusty Brazil. He's the president and principal energy market consultant for RBN Energy. Uh, Rusty, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rusty, people, people don't realize what happens is, is that I'll e- email you at quarter of six. I'll say, come on, Rusty, this has <laughs> got to move oil. This, it's whatever event. This has yeah. got to move oil. This one had to move oil. What the hell? We got 13 million barrels a day of production. And remember, OPEC and NOPEC have 1.7 million barrels a day of production they took off the market in order to boost prices. That's just sitting there. And you put that together with China's kind of subdued, and you put all those three things together, and it's going to take a real serious supply disruption over an extended period of time to have a real impact on this market. We've seen the rate count drop, uh, leading me to believe that there's going to be a slowdown in drilling, you know, Schlumberger pullback, right. Calibre pullback. Is that going to cause things to get firmer? It's... The, Production is not going to grow as fast this year as it grew last year. But that doesn't mean that production is not going to grow. The rigs that are coming out are not the most efficient rigs. The rigs that are staying on are the high-test, best rigs that they've got, and they're using them in all the best of the best sweet spots. So that means we're still going to have an increase in production. It's going to be mostly in the Permian. Uh, Oil out five years? Oil out five years in terms of in, in pricing. terms of pricing, uh, as, as long as we're still at the level that we are right now in terms of how much fracking that we can do and the, the general economy, we're talking about pricing, about where they are right now. Jeez. And in other words, we've been in this cycle uh, of upper 50s, you know, lower 60s prices for, you know, darn near five years now. Now, your note this morning talks about the permit, but also we still have some other bases. We do. I mean, together... Uh, this could be long-lasting, but the Permian seems like it's the mother load still. It is the mother load. You can think of it like 75% of, of, of all of the kick that we're getting is coming from the Permian because the Permian is, is really like several basins stacked up on top of right. each other, right? So we just get a lot of bang for the buck. Everyone's talking to me about potential bankruptcies in natural gas. Yeah. Natural gas is an incredibly low price. What's going to happen? Meltdown. There? Well, meltdown. It's meltdown. We're, we're talking uh, about 92 today. The last time that the price of natural gas was at this level in January was 1999. We were actually thinking about writing a piece on that of something saying something like gas buyers are partying like it's 1999. Well, I know that one. Uh, <laughs> from the top of my show. Now, what that tells me again is companies that are levered to natural gas, they could be history. If they're levered to natural gas alone. But remember, about half the United States gas in the United States comes from associated gas that comes along with crude oil and NGLs. Those That's guys, particularly in the Permian, the typical Permian producer only receives about 2 or 3 percent of the revenue from a given well from natural gas. Okay. Everything else is coming from oil and NGLs. So what happens when natural gas prices go down to folks in the Permian? Nothing. Well, that's important. Now, uh, the president just said that the Chinese be committed to spend $50 billion on liquefied natural gas. Yep. Do, we, it, do we have enough production to make that, enough trains to make that work? Well, there, there, there's a couple of things to note here. First of all, we can make a lot of, in, of LNG production, and most of the production or a lot of the production in the United States is not destination specific. So if it was going to Latin America, if it was okay. going to Europe, it can turn around and divert and go to China if the market is there. The catch is that the Chinese have a 25 percent tariff on LNG. Uh-oh. That hasn't come off. We still have tariffs on a lot of Chinese goods. So whether or not that comes off or not is going to make a big difference as to whether it's really LNG or propane or butane, which are also part of the same deal, but also have tariffs in excess of 25%. Okay. Uh, 
in people in Davos, they're talking about being green. Uh, we had parsley on. I know you think highly of the company. Yeah, right. They've cut down the number of flaring. But can it, a fossil company, fossil fuel, ever be green? Ever be green? They can be greener. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, there are several companies right now that are actually using CO2 flooding to actually boost production of crude oil. So in other words, they're taking CO2 out of the ground and they're putting it back in the ground to boost production. Who's doing that? That's fantastic. Oxy is one of the companies Which one? that's doing it. Oxy. Occidental? Uh-huh. Wow. I mean, that's green. That's green. I mean, it's greener. It's greener. Right. It's greener. But in terms of, you know, the whole flaring issue, if you're in the Permian and you were a producer that did not get pipeline transportation out of the Permian, it's maxed out. So if you're in the, in the Permian and you do not have pipeline transportation, then you're stuck with either selling your gas for a real cheap price to right. somebody who does or cutting back your drilling program, which no producer no. wants to do, or flaring. One last question. Mesh limited partnerships, a lot of wealthy people watch the show. Uh, they cease to be growth. They're getting killed still. Uh, can they ever come back? Well, first of all, there's some MLPs that are in the right places and are doing the right things. Okay. So New Star, Enterprise, there's yes. some good ones. Yes. How, however, if, if, you, if you look at the MLP space and the good ones, they actually yield, they actually have a pretty decent yield. Yes. So their distributions sort of make up for their stock okay. appreciation issues. And the people that are looking at MLPs these days tend to be debt guys that are looking at that yield, because the yield's pretty darn good, not stock appreciation guys. That's terrific. As always, you are the go-to guy. That's Rusty Brazil. He's president, principal energy markets consultant for RBN Energy. The way I start my morning every single day, I know I bug you, and I really <laughs> apologize. But you you know when I email you, and you always come back instantly. May have money's back after the break. Thank you. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.